What's up guys, it's Lorenzo with Quality Mobile Video. In the last couple of videos, we showed you the process on how to install a backup camera, namely making the connection at the brake light, and we showed you how to put a system together. Today, we're actually gonna take you all the way through an install, so let's get rolling. Step one is to disconnect the battery, the negative terminal only. So we're just popping off the rear panel. Um, there's several different pops. Usually we start in one corner because it's a little bit easier. And then we usually there's either a retaining pin or a sliding pin that we need to pull out. It's just easier always when using, whenever trying to take off a panel to use a pry tool. Typically we try to use plastic as it doesn't mar the finishes. Occasionally you got to use metal. Um, but usually the plastic ones are just strong enough to get it done. Last step is to remove the panel pops that didn't come out with the panel. So the next step is to gain access to the underside of the grommet. We have to take off all the finishing pieces for the headliner. So go ahead and start popping those out. You want to be a little careful um, not to make the headliner dirty. In this particular case, it's already a little dirty, but uh, the tools are clean, so it's not going to create a problem for us. After popping off this side panel, we realized that the large panel is actually holding this panel in. Some vehicle manufacturers do things differently. Sometimes you can get away with just popping off the side panel and gently pulling out the top and running the wire behind. In this particular vehicle, it looks like we're going to have to take everything out in order to get the wiring run the way we need to. So we'll go ahead and start doing that. In order to get the panel out, first thing we have to do is take out the seat. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then in order to gain access to the seat belt, we have to pop off the panel. So typically in most vehicles, uh, the manufacturers will hide screws behind certain panels. So we want to check in here to see if there is one. In this particular case, there's not, but there is one behind the cup holder. It's a little difficult to see, but it's a hex bolt that sits down there. Took a little bit to get the panel out, a couple hidden screws, a couple little pops that were in uh, disguise. So now that we got all those out, we'll go ahead and get the panel out. So in this particular vehicle, we opted to take everything out in order to run the wire with all the factory wiring. Some people would opt to just run the cable through, you know, run it down the side and then get it tucked underneath the side of the panel. It's not the way we like to do things, so we decided to take the whole panel out. Certainly a little bit more work, but it's the best way to do it. In order to get power to the system, we typically grab power underneath the steering column. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and remove the kick panel or the uh, knee bolster. Now that we got everything taken apart, We've gotten all the door jams taken apart. We've got the back taken apart. The only thing we haven't done is take off the A-pillar cover. We'll get to that when we install the monitor, but now we're gonna go ahead and start running all the wires. So we'll start at the back. We need to take out the ledge. That way we can get the wiring nice and neatly tucked up underneath. Uh, the way we do that is some vehicle manufacturers are a little different. In this particular case, we have a bolt here, a bolt here, and a bolt there and then one plastic snap here. So just gonna go ahead and undo the 10 millimeter bolts. This is the factory wiring here. We're gonna be running our cables with it. The way we'll do that is we'll go ahead and, and cut the electrical tape, cut a slit in the loom, and then we'll run our wires through it. So what we like to do is we like to tape off the entire harness. That way we have a really nice clean harness. It actually looks OEM. 
So we'll just go ahead and start taping it up. So in a couple of the last videos, we showed you different ways on how to wire. On this particular system, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get power at the fuse box. That's gonna power the monitor always. And we're also gonna run power to constantly power the camera. That way at any time on the rear view mirror, all you have to do is press the power button. You can immediately see what's behind you. What that will require though, is us to actually run the camera cable and power all the way through the loom. And then we'll take a separate wire to grab the signal at the rear tail light. So we're gonna begin zip tying the uh, camera harness to the factory harness. This way it looks original, it's a quality job. All right, and you saw us run our wires. We're gonna go ahead and make the ground connection to the factory ground point by using a, a crimp ring terminal. And we'll just take out the 10 millimeter bolt and attach it to the same spot. So now that we have our wires tied off, you can see the factory grommet here is where the factory wiring goes through. And then it runs through this boot. And then the wiring on the boot runs down and there's two attachment points right here at the pillar. So we actually need to run our wires along with these. That way in the event, the wiring needs to be disconnected. Um, it also protects the wiring. So we do a, a pretty much a factory type job. In order to get that out, it's a little complicated. There's, you pull the gr uh, rubber grommet back and then there is a snap tab that releases the front. Now the back is a little bit harder to get to. So we have to fully remove the rubber. And so now that we've got the wiring uh, released all the way through, we're just gonna go ahead and pull the connectors. That way we can fully release the harness and we can run our wires with the factory harness. If you left this harness in and tried to feed a wire through this grommet, it's virtually impossible. It can be done, but you can get the wire twisted through the factory wiring. And in this way, we get a nice straight shot. It takes an extra couple minutes to do, but I think it's the right way to do it. As we said earlier, in our particular system, what we're gonna do, we're gonna do two things. We're gonna supply power to the camera as soon as the vehicle's on, and we need to supply the reverse trigger to the monitor. In order to do that, we just take typical wire. Uh, in this case, we're gonna use blue for the trigger wire and we're gonna use yellow, orange to power the camera. Uh, there's a couple little tricks that you can do. One is which is you can tie this off to something like this, put the opposite end in the drill and do a nice twist. You can also tape it like we're gonna do in this particular case, just to make it look like all the wiring in the rest of the vehicle. So now that we got our wires taped off, the one step that you didn't see is I went and washed my hands. The reason for that is it's a lot easier to keep a car clean than it is to try and clean it after the fact. You get all kinds of gunk on your hands, get tape residue. The minute that gets on the carpet or the headliner, it's extremely hard to get it off. Uh, you have to use different types of solvents. You have to be real careful because you can discolor everything. So what we're gonna do is after we've taped the wire, we're gonna go ahead and basically make our runs to the back for both the power and reverse trigger. So we're just gonna run the wires with the factory wiring. Uh, there's a little loop here in which the wiring goes through. We wanna maintain, we wanna put our wires with those. That way when the panels go back on, they don't get, the wiring doesn't get pinched, uh, nothing bad happens. So all we're doing right now is just uh, roughly running the wire. We still have the video cable to run back, so we're not gonna tie off any of the wiring and make it look pretty. We're just getting a rough idea as how the wiring w needs to go. Um, this way we can make our connections at the back. So now that we've gotten the wire run all the way to the back, you can see we have our blue wire and our orange wire. As we said earlier, we're gonna use the blue to send the signal of the reverse light to the front, and then we're gonna use orange to power the camera all the time. The factory tailgate connectors are located here, so it's pretty convenient for us to put a disconnect in the event the car has to go back to the dealer, they have to, for some reason, take the back out. We'll have a disconnect so that our wiring makes all the same connections at the same connection point. So 
anybody in the future who needed to pull the loom will have no problem doing so. So now that we're about ready to run the wiring through the loom, what I like to do is I typically run an extra wire. Uh, in a step earlier, we showed you how we grounded the camera at the factory ground point. Sometimes the grounding in the tailgates is not as good as the vehicle ground. So for that reason, I typically run an extra wire through the loom because it's so much easier to do it now. Worst case is I don't use it, but if I have to use it for ground, I can. If I have to use it for some other thing, I can. So I'm gonna go ahead and run two wires uh, through the loom along with the video cable. So in order to run our wires, we will need to fish them. We just use a cheap coat hanger. Uh, the one thing you should do is massage the wires so that all the wires are on the back side of the, the grommet and then kind of bend your fish so that it kind of has a little bit of an arc so that way you don't get tangled with any of the factory wiring. And one little trick that we use is we use dishwasher soap to kind of lubricate the cable. That way it's super easy, but this is non-toxic, won't damage the cable, won't harm it in any way, and it's super easy to wash off with just water. So now you can see we have our connections for power, we have our spare wire, our RCA cables run the length of the loom, everything is done like factory. And then where the factory connections go is where we're gonna make our connections. So in the event, like I said earlier, if they ever need to take the door off for whatever reason, any technician can make the connections. Everything will be color coded, super easy, just like the factory would do it. You make sure that you run it through all the factory grommets, otherwise you can find yourself having run the wire and having to rerun the wire because you forgot one of the loops that it has to go through. You can see we got through the top two, now we go through the bottom one, and we'll be good to go. And then we're just gonna tape off the wires so that they're uh, held with the factory connectors, or pardon me, the factory retainers. Refeed the wire through the factory holes and put the grommets back together. And you can see, we have all our wires, just like the factory does. Everything's pretty much put back together. It's not really all that difficult, just takes a lot of time. Uh, it's much easier to do just by saying you're gonna just take everything apart and do it. Um, that way you can easily run the wires. You have it literally almost 100% factory. You have our spare wire. We just have to make our power connection. And then it's a matter of just mounting the camera, putting in the monitor, making our power connections. We're almost done. So now that we have all our power connections, the only thing we need to do is run the RCA cable from here to the front. That way at the back, we'll have the same disconnect both for power and for the RCA. And now we have our two leads run to the back along with our RCA cable. So now we're gonna go ahead and uh, button up the back, put in the camera, drill the hole so that we have a nice new grommet and uh, we'll be good to go. So now we're getting ready to install the camera. Uh, the type of camera that we're going to use is what is known as a surface mount camera. This actually has a recessed nut. Sometimes others have brackets. But on our website, you'll find all of our surface mount cameras under the surface mount camera uh, category. So the intent with this is to basically recess the body of the camera or a portion of the camera. That's what retains the camera and looks OEM, super easy to install, um, gives us a lot of clearance in the back and it's just really easy and nice looking. The way we're going to drill this is we use a unibit. That is this multi-step bit. It drills plastic really nicely, really easily, doesn't catch and pull the drill. Um, so what we've gone ahead and done is we've gone ahead and marked just by using a scratch all where exactly we want to mount the camera. You can see it with the little point right there. So we're going to go ahead and drill it. So 
what we're going to do now is run the wire through this grommet and retape this whole thing. That way the, the connection is still waterproof, just like the factory connection. One of the things we have to do is you can see this is molded. So what we're going to end up doing is actually cutting the grommet. There's really no way around it. It won't be as waterproof as the original, but it's better than trying to, you know, put it against the grommet through the hole that could pinch the cable. This cable unfortunately did not come with its own grommet, otherwise we'd just drill our own hole right next to the original factory hole. But we're going to go ahead and try and put this back together as best as possible. So we've gotten the original grommet off and now each wire on the original grommet was molded. So what we're going to do is we're just going to cut out some of the molding, that way we can tape the wire and then it'll have a nice seal. So what we've done using a, a small set of pliers, or uh, actually cu cutters, sorry, and a uh, razor blade, is we've kind of hollowed out the center. So you can see there was the original four wires molded, but now we've hollowed it out so we can actually run all the cables, and then we can re-tape at the end. The one thing we will do is put the slit at the bottom, that way if any water runs around the top, it'll drain through the bottom. We've gone ahead and put the, the camera wiring along with the original factory wiring. Now when we go back to reinstall this, just the pressure of this will seal the, the rubber back up. And you can see we've gone ahead and got it attached. The slit is in the bottom. Should be pretty watertight. We've gone ahead and reattached all of the mechanisms so that the handle works and the lock works. Pretty simple to take them off and pretty simple to put them back on. So now we'll do the final wiring in the tailgate and we'll be ready to go to the front. So our orange wire is going to be the power that feeds the camera and that's gonna come from the front. So we're going to go ahead and make a uh, connection here. We're going to do it with a quick disconnect. That way in the event, like we said earlier, if you ever have to take the harness out, you can easily disconnect that. We already have a disconnect with the RCA, so we'll make that connection here. Blue wires are spare, but on this harness, the blue wire will be the reverse signal, and that will be sent to the front. So we'll make these connections. The one we'll leave open for now is the reverse, but we do have the battery disconnected, so we actually have to test for the reverse light before we make this connection. And you can see now we have a disconnect. We'll go ahead and tape these wires off. Make the RCA connections using a barrel, but we also then tape them so there's never a, a chance for them to back themselves out and become disconnected. So in order to take the rear view mirror off the factory mounting point, and as you can see, it's adhered right here, Toyota has a little slot in the back and that's where we put the pick through and then there's this spring. Got to be a little careful because this thing will come flying off if you don't watch out. So this is the RVM ZH4300 from SafeSight. Um, mounts the exact same way. What makes it a little nicer is it has a set screw to hold it into the factory mounting point. So all you have to do is just attach it. Um, we'll get an Allen key in just a second after we do some wiring uh, to secure it in place. But as you can see, looks original. Can't even tell that it has a mirror or a monitor in it and is a perfect mirror. And so now we'll go ahead and start tying off our wire with the factory wire. Um, the one thing we will do is we will have to fish this through. Um, hopefully we can get the box through. If not, what we'll have to do is disconnect it again. But we've been pretty lucky with getting these boxes through. So. Hopefully we can, if we can't, we'll just have to undo it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna carefully fish a wire down through this small hole here. You have to be a little bit careful because you don't wanna go pushing too hard. You don't wanna hit anything. But usually if you just go really slow, you can get it down and here it is. And it's nice and easy to slip through. It's not binding on anything. And now what we'll do is just go ahead and tape it up. So now that we got all of our wires run to the central location, we have our fuse box here. We're going to use a fuse tap to get our power. Um, I'm going to go ahead and tie these wires off. We do have this control box that we 
tried to get past up there. We will go ahead and tuck that up here. It will be away from, you know, most of all the, the EMI and RFI noise. We're tucking it up as far as possible. Um, it's usually a wise thing to do, try to get it away from everything because there is a transformer in here and it can pick up noise. Um, it would be video noise, it wouldn't be that big a deal. But the further away, the less likelihood we have of that. We'll go ahead and make our final connections, tie everything off, and then we'll test the system. All right, so we've gone ahead, we've made our final connections and done a little bit of the wiring cleanup. As you, we've showed you in our last video on the different system configuration, we'll just go over it one more time here. Remember in this system, we're gonna power the camera all time so you can press the button on the monitor to turn it on. And to do that, we brought our blue wire from the back connected to the green trigger wire. So this wire is connected to the positive side of the reverse light. We have to provide power, which in this case is the orange wire. That will turn on and off with the key. And the black wire is ground. So we've run that to the monitor and you can see we've wide power off to the camera. This goes to the camera. This goes to the reverse light, our video signal from the back to the video input on the monitor. And we've neatly tied off the wires. We'll go ahead and tuck everything back up. The one thing we've also done is capped off the one unused RCA so that way it doesn't ground out, create noise issues. We'll just go ahead and tuck the rest of this up here. And so now we're left with our two wires. We have a black wire for ground, so we're gonna ground that at the factory ground point. And all we gotta do is connect power and the system should work. So in order to grab power in the system, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the fuse box. Um, we sell these FT mini ATCs, which are these fused caps. So what you do is you take out the original fuse and you'll put a new fuse in line. So you have a fused output and you put the original fuse back into its location. So you're not really uh, overdoing anything here. So that just goes into the original location. For the sake of this video, we're gonna just turn it around temporarily. And the circuit that we, we like to tap is actually the cigarette lighter plug. Uh, that way, you know, that's meant as a straight DC output uh, type uh, right off the bus. It's just a DC output. You know, it's not tied to a radio. It's not tied to anything that can potentially introduce noise other than the entire fuse block itself. It makes it super convenient. And so all we'll do is make this connection here, put our fuses back and we should be good to go. As we showed you in the last video how to test for reverse signal, there's one kind of dead giveaway in this particular vehicle. You can see that on both bulbs, there's a white and black wire. More than likely that's the common wire or the ground in this case, and the red being positive 12 volts. But what we'll go ahead and do is we'll actually go ahead and test it so you can see it on a voltmeter. Now that we've made all our connections, all we have to do is turn on the vehicle, put it in reverse, and we should be good to go. There we are. So now we'll just go ahead and put everything back together. Hopefully this video helps on your next backup camera installation. Make sure to check out qualitymobilevideo.com for all the latest backup cameras and monitors. Thanks for watching. Leave your comments below. See you again next time.